Hi there. Um, I'm Mark Coda, the owner of uh, Your Social Chef, a restaurant marketing agency. And on this uh, online prosperity show, I talk about uh, several topics. Well, mainly a big one is um, objectives. How do you set objectives to your marketing, advertising campaigns for your restaurant? Uh, and uh, we you, we also touch on a, a zoomed out. Uh, version of that in terms of high level how do you look at your objectives and low level in terms of the practicalities and how uh, and how do you achieve that in a in a practical plan we also talk about some life lessons some long life li life lessons and journeys uh, which i would i believe you would find find uh, very valuable to your personal experience and to your personal journey in this life thank you Welcome to the Online Prosperity Show, and I'm your host, Prosper Tarolinga. And today we have a special guest, Mark. Mark, how are you doing, my man? I'm pretty good, uh, Prosper. Thank you for having me. Fantastic. Now, ladies and gentlemen, Mark has been a, collab a collaborative ally with the restaurant's brands since 2009. He's going to be telling us all about that and what that entails. And what he specifically does is help restaurants achieve that harmonious balance between their business and marketing goals. He's got a quite an interesting, um, you know, fact to share about his own personal journey um, about how he lost 40 kilos within nine months while just sitting on his computer desk. So Mark is probably going to be telling us how he did it. And hopefully by the end of this show, we would have also lost a bit of weight, um, you know, that we can attribute to what he says. But I digress, right? He will be letting us know all of that, um, you know, by himself. He will also share with us memories, um, you know, of him traveling to Italy. And he was documenting a story about pizza across the whole country and everything else. But I could go on and on. Mark, you're the one that experienced all of these things. You're the one that... Um, you know, has all these stories to tell. Tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got involved, um, you know, in the restaurant uh, marketing business. I think um, the uh, thank you, first, thank you for having me. And um, and um, um, I really enjoy uh, talking about this experience and uh, because I know sometimes someone that's going through a similar journey or a similar experience, they can pick up some things. Uh, even, even if you pick up one thing out of this today that might... Uh, uh, provide value to you or your business or your life whoever is, might be listening to this um uh, uh, it brings fulfillment uh, to me and to my life because i feel like we're we're providing value and we're not just wasting time you know um so what how and why and and why your social chef and why restaurants um i guess it's it, it's all about the you know you, the, the journey that you go through and 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 it takes you to places um i originally came to Australia and started uh, working in convenience store businesses. And during that time, <clears throat> a lot of people said to me, um, like a lot of customers uh, said to me, um, you should coach people how to run their business or how to market their business. You're really good at it, at it and stuff like that. And, you know, like you, a lot of people uh, hear that at the kitchen table when when their mom or their wife or their sister-in-law make them stuff and they say, oh, you should open up a cafe. You're so good at that. <clears throat> um, and so we all get similar comments. Um, I actually took that comment, those comments seriously. And I started um, I started a, some, something on the side of the convenience store business. And it was kind of a digital marketing agency in the early days of Facebook. Um, Instagram wasn't out there yet. <clears throat> and I started doing some stuff with Facebook, not only with my businesses, but also with other people businesses. And we, we started getting some results. Um, and then I had this light, light bulb moment. I'm like, maybe uh, this is, me to connect with my childhood um uh interests of internet and technology and and social was coming to that um uh, surface and i'm then i started looking into it testing and doing stuff more with my businesses the ones that i've owned over the years and um and i've started getting some really good results and 
that's when I'm, I took that decision saying, well, I got to find a way to take this agency or this digital work into a full-time uh, uh, career. And that's when I, um, I took uh, the full-time approach. Yes, I started that journey back 2009 where Facebook kind of started uh, showing up in the surface in Australia. Um, and 2012, 2013 is when I took that full time. The first two years was really, really tough for me to get clients, uh, to let people know about, you know, cause yeah, it was easy to get a customer come in and try your, uh, uh Portuguese tart or your, uh, or your donuts or, you know, it's so easy to do that cause there's a lot of them, but when you're trying to uh, teach people or business owners about social media when social media just started and nobody knew they didn't even know what internet is like how do you even use internet for bus local business and then you had to talk about social media that nobody really got it at that time so we it took me two years to build um portfolio of a variety of uh, customers and clients then i ended up looking at my list and seeing oh the most of my clients on the list was cafes and restaurants and that's in 2015 i made the decision to rebrand and just focus 100 percent on restaurants and cafes um and that that's when the market started to mature a little bit i started understanding what social media is cafes and restaurants started to understand well we're going to be on social media now uh, and I've rebranded at that same time and I've achieved this like instant breakthrough as soon as I've rebranded. Um, and that was like, you know, my journey started with seriously now with restaurants and cafes and understanding all that. Let's take, let's take a step back. How, how did I succeed into going into business, rebranding, building the agency be not not because oh I know how to post on social media or how to run ads on social media. Yeah, I I understood what the business owner wanted out of this. They didn't really want engagement on social media. They didn't really want impressions or clicks or likes or comments or shares. That they, they they didn't really need or want any of that that's that's not what they really wanted or what they really needed yes they sit and talk sometimes people don't understand this and they say well my engage, my engagement is dead and i'm or whatever like dude what like what what do you want out of this what do you really want out of this because i i know i already know what they want i just gotta get them to say what they want and well i want engagement why do you want engagement oh well so i can get sales okay sweet so let's focus on that we need to get sales. Um, and then because I, back then when I, when I ran my businesses, I wanted sales, I wanted profits. I wanted to grow my business. I wanted, I was flipping businesses. Like I would engage and improve the business, sell it, going into another one, improve it, sell it. And I, I knew what, I knew what I wanted. I wanted to buy low, increase the sales, increase the profits, streamline the business, sell the business to go do it again. Like I, I, I knew cause I was there and I knew what they want. Um, so that's how um, how I kind of grew the agency because I gave them what they really want out of this engagement. Um, then over time, I've learned more about marketing and advertising, and the science of advertising, the science of how how to make advertising work better, uh, how to have how, the difference between short term and long term, and how to do all of that. And still today, we have the same conversation that I used to have with people back in 2013. What are, I want engagement. Why do you want engagement? I want sales. Every single time. Today, we're in 2023. It's this exact same conversation when we get someone on a Zoom call or, or a strategy session or a consultation. They're not happy with that engagement. Why are you not happy with it? I want sales. And that's, and you know, and kind of we knew we, we've, we knew how to do that now. We we know what they want. We we, we know the science behind it. Yeah, sure. Every diff, every business have its own challenges because sometimes as a business owner, you go in and probably this is your first experience into opening up a restaurant and you create that massive mess. And then you think, oh, the answer is marketing or the answer is social media 
or the the answer is bringing this in a brand new um uh i don't know french toast or something that's gonna drive your business to, to the moon it's it's not it's not that it's just a combination of things combination of how do you do things in the kitchen how do you do things with customers how do you put menus together how do you price your menu how do you deal with your staff how do you deal with your providers how do you deal with family at home how do you deal with your own finances how do you deal how do you deal with your own personal goals and professional goals how do you communicate with your marketing agencies what like what how do you even understand your business um it's it's a combination of all of those things sometimes they hire they hire an influencer uh, to post on their to post their business on their instagram account or tiktok account they're thinking this is the answer to all their problems or they hire a marketing agency, say, hey, uh, I want you to improve my engagement. And I think this is the answer to all their problems. Uh, uh, if you take someone experienced in this universe, the, the marketing isn't the answer to all your problems. They, you have a, a variety of problems. They sit into departments and categories, and you got to understand those. And, and it's okay. You don't need to understand everything right now. And you don't need to get overwhelmed right now. Just understand one thing at a time, take a note of it, say, okay, I'm aware of this now. I'm aware I'm not good. I'm not good enough with my staff or I'm not good, good enough with my kids at home. And it's getting and causing me anger. And this anger, I'm, I'm transmitting this into my business and I can't see clearly through, through my business because my relationship at home is not that great. And it's affecting that or my, I'm not good with my finances or I'm, I'm, I'm not consistent enough. So it's OK. You can you can put this on paper and understand better yourself. Once you understand yourself and your problems, you can take that back and, and start working on it a little bit at a time, one step at a time. Even if it takes time, you're already a million times better than someone swimming into that daily chaos without doing anything about it, without doing anything about understanding it. And then streamlining or beaming that anger everywhere they go with anything that they touch, with anything that they do, there's no, there's a better way of doing this, and it's and it's and it's simple. Sorry, it is simple. Is just put it on paper, work on it, even if it takes time. This is this is the wisdom that we learn over time. You know, this is the wisdom that you can implement in your life and in your business, um, and you start seeing magic happening. Not because it's it's a fairy tale. It's because you're doing this the hard things. You're doing the hard things at one step at a time. And that's you know I know we took this conversation a little bit outside of marketing, uh, because because I'm known I don't believe in fairy tales and I don't believe in the hammer is the solution to every problem. So it's it's a holistic approach about everything. That's how you're gonna take business. That's how you're gonna take your problems. And that's how you start finding better solutions, better solutions for your problems. Uh, I hope that I hope that made sense. Uh, we haven't spoken about the the the, the weight loss yet, but I'll, I'll stop here and see if you got any com any questions, any comments, any comments of your own, Prosper. Oh, absolutely. You know, uh, we could actually just end this show right now because. <laughs> <laughs> but the best the best part about how you went through this journey uh, that was remarkable was the fact that, you know, when when you started with the restaurants, OK, they didn't know what to expect off the Internet. And I remember when when I also started with marketing, there was you know, tools like Zomato or Urban Spoon and their competitors were just using those, um, you know, particular platforms to just leave reviews and testimonials that were fake and false. So people had no trust, um, you know, of the internet and it was so brave for you to literally take them through that sort of journey. And now you're combining business and marketing together. Now you brand yourself as a collaborative ally you know, with these restaurants, restaurant brands. Um, can you just explain how you actually help businesses achieve this harmonious, you know, duet or partnership between their actual business and marketing goals? And what sort of strategies and techniques do you employ to create, you know, tangible results for your clients? Yes, very, very good question. Um, so now let's talk about the, we, we we spoke about the holistic view and the, the kind of the big image before. Now let's let's dive into some of the details and practic the practicalities. 
if a, if a restaurant come on board and says, well, you know what, um, we're doing well, but we want to go to the next level. Okay, the next level is let, let's define that next level. What's your what's what? How how do you interpret that next level? Put it in paper, put it in, in numbers. Say, so, well, we're we're maybe we're making fifty k a week. I want to make seventy k a week. Okay, so that's that's your next level. What are we doing right now? And then we might write this down on paper. We're doing some basic social media. Most of our business is organic. Um, uh, maybe we send some emails out, but we're not really doing anything special yet we we kind of know that we there is a lot we can do but we're not really doing it all right cool well um let's let's look at some short-term stuff that we can do right now let's look at the, some long-term stuff like in terms of strategy uh and um in terms of short-term and long-term the difference between the two is short-term anything that requires an instant result that what we consider short-term um and then in terms of long-term anything that considers generating business three six months from now that's considered considered long term uh, and uh, to give you an example short term might be um coming up with a new dish uh running a, a long lunch the italian long lunch on your sundays events uh, special nights and it most of the time it doesn't require a discount okay we're not talking short term we're not talking about buy one get one we're talking about new dish items new menus new events new special nights uh uh collaboration uh, infusing products with some other brands in the market um there, there's a lot that we can consider a um a short-term campaign and sometimes you might do two or three to because one of those might uh produce a breakthrough but if you do just one idea and that idea flops You've just wasted time. So it's always good to test two to three things and see what works, what doesn't work. So on top of that, say, okay, cool. This is our short-term strategy. What's our long-term strategy? Long-term long strategy is running campaigns that educates people about your business. And we also call them brand response. Brand response is, hey, uh, we're a it modern Italian restaurant. This is, the, this is what we do. This is our products. This is our menu. Uh, this like that would be your modern uh, uh, brand response campaign, uh, educating people about who, who you are and what you do, uh, and about your USP or a value proposition. Okay, unique selling proposition or value proposition. Um, so that would be one campaign. The other campaign, supporting campaigns to that that we do on the side, part of your long term strategy is educating people about different parts of your menu. Like, hey, this is our um, burgers menu. This is our uh, mains this is our desserts and sometimes we might not do that we what we might do is go to each category on your menu and grab your best sellers and then we create campaigns for your best sellers from each category of your menu so now we have short-term short-term campaigns generating instant results we also have educational brand response campaigns say hey this is who we are uh, this is what we do this is our usb book now uh, uh, obviously driving with a CTA, what 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 do you want them to do? And then the supporting campaigns about your best selling items from different categories of the menu is also ends with a CTA, a call to action, book now because what what behavior you want them to you to, to to do? So you're gonna tell them, um, and that would run. We will put them out. We'll start running, and then our what's what's our metrics? What's our metrics? Our metrics is our client's support system. That's our metrics. Yeah, sure, we're getting likes and comments, but what we've learned over the time, we can get a lot of likes and a lot of comments, no sales. Or we can get no likes, no comments, a lot of sales. So we shouldn't we shouldn't actually take the engagement of social media as a an indication if something is working or it isn't. We we go we as soon as we sign up a client, we get access to their post system. And we start looking and analyzing. And we don't analyze this week versus last week or this month versus last month. We do this quarter versus the quarter of the year before. Matching quarters, matching matching months, year to year, quarters to quarters, but has to be this year versus last year. Um, and that's how we start not we start seeing, oh yeah, things are working. Sometimes things things doesn't work at all. We could do all of this stuff and some and it doesn't work. Why? Sometimes the client has already dominated it's his market. You're already dominating your market. You hit a plateau. 
The only way to achieve a breakthrough is either open up another location, enter a new market. Uh, do If you want to create a campaign, it needs to be like a hell of a big idea campaign that you force people that go to your competitors to come to you, not because of that, oh, this is who you are, or this is what you do. Well, they, you've been telling them this, and they're not coming, so it's not really breaking through. You already dominated the market that you can dominate, and, you, and there is people that just want to go to your competition. They don't care about who you are, what you do. They're not interested. So then that's when you go, okay, well, if we're going to force them, we're going to go maybe offer a trip to Italy. I don't know, like go something crazy. Come dine here, order from us. And in the next three months, we're going to pick a family that's going to go full on one week uh, getaway to Italy. We're going to cover every, everything. That's now that you're forcing that market to come to you. And and again, you're not providing a discount. Have you noticed? We haven't spoken about discounts yet. And that that's one way of breaking through a, a stubborn market when you're, you're already dominating your market and you're just trying to steal people now. Um, other than that, you just got to think um, beyond that sh one shop is opening up new locations or maybe branching out into catering or something like that. Um, yeah, otherwise, you're just going to be beating on the same kind of uh, music sheet and you're expecting new music. Absolutely. I think it was um, Einstein that say that insanity is when yeah. you you try and do the same thing and expect different results. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you know, I, I have I have a music sheet right here, and, <laughs> and you're, you're 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 looking at that music sheet. You got your piano set, and you're you're like, "Gee, man, I'm, I keep playing this music, but I'm not I'm not getting new music." Well, maybe because you need to change that change, music sheet and change the music go, sheet. and go to a new market, and then and then you start getting new results. Or but because so, you already tried your strategies, you. Try different strategies. This is the market that you're trying stuff with and you're still getting the same results. So if that's the case, you either need to change the market, expand your market, or introduce new services that goes beyond your current services. Um, because sometimes, okay, you try new products, you try new offers, new discounts, new uh, short-term campaigns, long-term campaigns, and it's, your business still doesn't budget, still doesn't go above what you're already doing. Uh, uh, one, one At one stage, okay, um, if the business isn't doing well, isn't doing well, isn't breaking even, uh, and you try to do marketing, now marketing needs to work a lot harder. You're not talking about going the next level anymore. You're saying, I need to break even, make profit, and go to the next level. So now you're asking a lot more from your marketing. You know, and, and if that's the case, you're already in trouble because marketing is going to be very expensive to help you or to help you like hit break even, make profit and go to the next level is going to be very expensive. You need to be prepared for that. Otherwise, otherwise you've got money and you want to try that, try it short. If it doesn't work, you might need to step back, look at your concept, your whole business model. Do you need to move it somewhere else or do you need to re re change your model, change your business model or change your concept or something from, I don't know, from American barbecue to Italian uh, or, or change, change the location. Uh, if you tried everything and something is it and it is it working? Yes, it's an expensive exercise, but unfortunately, that's how this business works. So you gotta have money and you gotta be able to uh, to do this sort of stuff when when you need to. Absolutely. So yeah, I hope I hope I hope that answered uh, the yeah. question. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. I'm loving this. We should have actually uh, asked you to come in for a webinar because I bet everyone is just taking a lot of notes for this, but yeah. obviously that's something else for another day. Now, I, I really love how you've gone into depth with, um, you know, the strategies that you take, you know, the long, sh the long term, the short term, and how you are, you know, looking at different sort of campaigns, you know, your, your educational ones, your brand response, and some other supporting campaigns that you work with your clients. And the fact that you literally do not look at the likes because likes do not, uh, you know, pay the bills or things of that nature. And you literally looking at the point of sale 
where somebody's actually making that purchase. Now, this might really be well and truly good for somebody who's got a team, uh, somebody who's got the expertise that you have and, um, you know, has done the job and the work that you have done and knows exactly what to look for. But, you know, with restaurants, um, especially the ones that we come across, it's usually maybe a one-man shop. They probably have two to three other locations in different suburbs or neighborhoods. They don't quite have that meticulous um, you know, outlook of what does this plate represent in terms of our bottom line and things of that nature. Now, in your opinion, what should just be the primary objective of maybe uh, a marketing campaign for a restaurant business? And, and how does this sort of objective tie in with driving business results and achieving uh, tangible outcomes? Uh, let's see if I understood the question uh, properly. Yeah. Uh, you're asking is, we what's the simplest company. marketing what's the simplest marketing strategy that you can give um to a restaurant um i would if they're not doing any marketing at all um i would uh, say well start with an object with an okr okr method it's a goal setting method it's called okr uh o is the objective kr is key result what is your objective first? Oh, well, I want to kind of go from 50 to 60K a week. Okay. Key result. What needs to happen to achieve that main objective? Um, well, uh, I need to set up um, a new website, marketing campaigns. You just need to set a bunch of key results that all contributes toward that main objective. Uh, let's simplify this. Do you have a website? No. Okay. Key result one, set uh, set up a website. Key result two, do you have any marketing? Are you doing any marketing at all? No, I'm not doing any marketing. Okay. Key result two, uh, activate a marketing campaign that educates people about our offering. Just maybe just one campaign, just to keep it nice and simple for now. Um, and uh, key result three, what? do you have a booking system digital booking system no okay set up an online booking system hook it to your website included with your email marketing campaigns uh, digital ca campaigns your marketing do you have online ordering system no key result four and you just keep adding those key results one by one that all, all of this stuff needs to contribute toward your main objective i need to reach from move from 50k a week to 70k a week and these are the key results that needs to happen to achieve that big objective Fantastic. okay and then uh, and then you need to set this up usually what they say with okr methods they need to work or run on quarter by quarter so that would be like your next your uh, the, the next time you look at it and you analyze your results is by the next quarter say okay What's happening here? What did I do? Did I build the website yet? Did I have an online ordering? Yes. Online booking? Yes. Did I create a, a, a digital marketing campaign? Uh, that's brand response campaign telling people, this is who we are. This is what we do. Yes, yes, yes. Cool. Beautiful. Now what you, you look at your sales, say you move from 50 to 60. Now you've got, you still got to move from 60 to 70 uh, K a week. Then you go back and say, okay, what else can I do? Maybe I need to create more campaigns maybe i need to create some um short-term campaigns about new products and new events and this and you start building that stack here over time and you run it for another quarter and you go back and you see oh look we're moving the needle we're we're moving the needle that's that's great but you, you gotta keep in your mind that you're gonna hit a plateau with that business this business is one location isn't going to go infinite. Like it's just going to keep going up and up and up. You you have a market and that market is going to, you're just going to cover that market and that's it. Game over. You gotta, you gotta think beyond that location now. Um, and that's how McDonald's think. That's how all those big corporations think. If, if one location would give them infinite growth, there will be just one McDonald's dude. The one, the first one. You know, uh, go go watch the founder the founder movie. There, there was one McDonald's, and to achieve growth, you gotta go beyond beyond that. You gotta get your mindset beyond that one location, and and expecting infinite growth from that one location. You gotta go log beyond that. Fantastic. So that's that's how I would go about this. 
Absolutely. And thank you so much for giving us all that uh, elaborate information. Now, while you were talking, um, I think it was your second iteration, you did mention that a restaurant might differentiate themselves by maybe offering a trip to Italy or something unique that actually positions themselves within, you know, that community or things of that nature. Now, while I was researching stuff about you, I actually noticed you had a memorable trip that you took to Italy where you were documenting a story of pizza across the country. Now, could you share some of your highlights um, that you had on that trip and how it actually influenced your perspective um, on the restaurant industry? Oh, yes. This is one of the most memorable trips I've ever done uh, with a um, client of ours and a friend of mine, very close friend, uh, Johnny DeFrancisco, the director of uh, 400 Grady. Uh, uh, in Australia, um, where the decision was uh, made uh, by a party in Italy that, um, and at that time that Johnny uh, obviously was selected to go uh, as part of that uh, trip uh, because he was obviously one of the main characters of this whole trip. And uh, Johnny asked me to join him one is to get a closer look at the italian culture um to re to truly understand what you know the 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 italian cuisine the 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 italians and their connection their authentic connection to pizza and how passionate they are about their food and um so when we went there i, I saw all of that i saw how passionate they are about the about their pizza different regions have different perspectives and values and uh, uh, what would represent the, the perfect pizza. You know, you'd go to one region and it's all about the dough and another region, it's all about the tomato. Uh, and then one re another region, it's all about the cheese or, or the combination of all of that. But they all have their own kind of formula. Every region have their own formula. Um, uh, and sometimes uh, uh, each, every, every restaurant have, or every chef or have their own, kind of formula behind what what represents the the perfect pizza you know um and i i saw all of that i saw all of that and um and obviously i had some uh, some amazing pizza uh over in italy and i had an amazing time um with johnny and and friends in in italy uh, and uh, when when i came back i i've kind of built this a new appreciation to the details of something that we consider so simple here. It's a, it's a lot more deep and complex in where in its motherland, Italy, and that's pizza, you know? So the only way to kind of understand what I'm talking about, you got to go to Italy, visit different regions, talk about pizza, talk about with different people, Italians, not tourists. And and uh, you'll understand how much it means um, to people, yeah, uh, over there, you know. And and it's and then when you come back, you'll you'll have that, you'll uh, you'll you'll get a, a new appreciation grow within you, and you'll enjoy pizza a lot more, Italian food a lot more than before. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah yes. yes. Absolutely. Now, Mark, if um somebody's you know sitting in in the audience right now and they're watching and enjoying this show and they're really wanting to find out a little bit more about, um, you know, what it is that you do and how you can help them, especially if they are a multi-site uh, restaurant, what would be the best way for people to get a hold of you? They can get, uh, head over to your social chef.com, um, lodge a, a contact form or a strategy session. And then, um, um, They'll get they'll get a spot with us. We can talk to them, consult with them, strategize, and see if we can help them. You know, um, one thing that obviously I I, I try to I mention several times over any interview or discussion is we don't know what works for you. We 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 really don't know what works for you. We gotta go in with it in it together as a team and find what works for your business together. You know, don't expect, um, oh, this agency have some really good ratings and they're everywhere and I want to work with them, sure. But they really don't know what works for you yet. You, you, 
the, the attitude is you go in and you find what works for you together. And that's how you can make some magic happens. Come in with that attitude and we will, we will find something that works for your business. Absolutely. And I like that because obviously every restaurant is different. Every cuisine is totally different. And like you have elaborated, especially with pizza, you know, I was just thinking of pizza with a pineapple, but now I know you'd be like, nah, you shouldn't put a pineapple on a, on a pizza. Now, based on your experience and the fact that you are upfront with your clients to say, we don't know what works for you what are some common mistakes or misconceptions that restaurant businesses make when it comes to maybe setting and pursuing their marketing objectives and how can they actually avoid these pitfalls and improve their chances of success um pitfalls don't, don't ever 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 give 100 percent trust with the mark with your marketing agency don't ex don't give them total autonomous, go and do whatever you, autonomy, like to do whatever. Like, don't just give them that 100% autonomy or something. Don't, don't do that. Don't give them 100% control. They don't really understand your business. You're the one, it's, it's, uh, your business is, is, is a mold of you. Yeah. Is a role, is a result of your vision, your experience, your journey and get involved with them. Meet them halfway, 50-50, because then you're creating a combined recipe between your marketing agency and yourself, right. uh, and you're most likely going to, you know, you, you, you're going to find what's going to work for you. So that's kind of the big one. Don't just expect 100% uh, autonomy from your marketing agency, and you want them to automate everything for you, and you want you don't want to have anything to do with it. So that, that that's like the big one, big, big one. Two is um, get out of instant. I want growth now. I, I I want next level now. Don't don't think like that because when you when you start thinking like that, you start implementing strategies that are designed to destroy your business in the long run. Yes, yeah, sure. You you force your agency to do one two three because you want to see something like right now, right now, and then uh, a year from now. You're no longer working with that agency anymore. You no longer trust any other agencies. You're no longer achieving any other goals, and your business has gone backward. Just don't just don't don't do that. Don't do that stuff. Um, uh, three. Um, three is has nothing really to do with with marketing or business. It's just like life lesson. Uh, just be honest with yourself because the more you lie to yourself between you and yourself, um, you're not going to be able to communicate effectively with anybody, let alone talking to your marketing agency or your team or your, or people at home or people that you meet or with your customers. For as long as you continue lying to yourself, you can't be honest with yourself about what the real problem is that you're experiencing and you're just looking at Band-Aids and Panadol, no marketing agency is going to ever be able to help you. So that's that's a big bit pitfall too. Be honest with yourself uh, what the real problem is. Work on those problems. Engage the marketing agency. Be honest with them. Work with them. Um, and then you're more likely, you're more likely to achieve results beyond what you've ever imagined so tick off those three boxes and you'll be on the right track fantastic obviously yeah. it is a journey that we all yeah. go into and the more we self-discover ourselves the more we'll be able to pass on that as a gift to the people that we're serving because the people that are coming are specifically coming for the experience that they can have while they're sitting you know in the chairs that we are you know serving them out there now when you started obviously um you know, as we wind down, um, you know, this show, when, when you started, things were at a place where people were not really trust trusting with uh, social media. And now we've had so much 
coming up and now there's podcasts and, you know, as a restaurant, some people will be like, wait a minute, why would I want to start a podcast for a restaurant? And that could be a, yet another channel that, you know, a restaurant could actually use to generate, um, you know, that no like and trust about their, um, you know, cuisine and things of that nature, because they could just teach people what it is that they're doing without necessarily just talking about the plates that they're serving people. Now, in this sort of rapidly evolving landscape, you know, with all this digital uh, technology, as we as soon as we leave this, ChatGPT has probably changed the algorithm. I don't know what it's doing right now. What sort of um, emerging trends or strategies do you believe restaurants, businesses should be maybe aware of and sort of incorporate in their marketing objectives and um, how can they actually stay ahead of the, com the competition in this dynamic uh, industry? Um, I've been receiving a lot of questions about ChatGPT. Uh, a lot of restaurants is asking, what can I do with ChatGPT right now? What can I do with ChatGPT right now? Because they're seeing that a lot on pretty much everywhere. Um, at this very moment of time, we haven't really seen any development with restaurant tools that's using ChatGPT as yet. It's not out there yet. Yes, you can go to ChatGPT and uh, work with it to generate your uh, training material, uh, menu, write your menu, uh, write some emails to your team, um, uh, get some ideas about uh, uh, menu items. How would you word something, or or even like gluten free menu ideas? Uh, just the whatever parameters that you use it, you can you can get a lot of stuff like that. It'll probably improve your productivity internally. ChatGPT to use for internal use, like for this sort of stuff, amazing. You can you can get a lot done with it. Uh, for um, now they've just introduced something, uh, internet browsing. So inside ChatGPT4, if you have the uh, the uh, premium subscription, you can use ChatGPT4 browsing. Browsing means that it'll act, the tool will actually access the internet. So you can ask it some things about, hey, what kind of food is trending now in Melbourne uh, or uh, in the restaurant industry, even globally or locally? You just gotta feed it that parameters, and it'll and it'll look up and see if there is anything out there that you 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 need to pay attention to. So you could use it that way, um, but I have not seen anything that you could just hook up to your booking system or to your ordering system that's using ChatGPT. I'm pretty sure big companies it's already on their list, but because they're big companies, they're slow to move. We will see something in the next few months, but I have not seen anything as yet some other companies what i've seen them do is they're loading their their um faqs faqs and details about their businesses into a, a, a chat gpt bot that sits on your website so when someone visits your restaurant website they can talk to that bot about hey how do i book um what's your menu like is it gluten free what's your items blah 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 uh, I've tried to test some of it, and unfortunately, ChatGPT can't can't read beyond two pages at a time if you're loading PDFs as yet. Uh, so that's the other the other limitation. Because if you have a sometimes the menu is a two two page menu, and then you've got other details trying to elaborate on that menu and your services and your products and operating hours and FAQs, it 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 can't. It, it, it can't comprehend all of that as yet and to provide insightful responses every single time. Um, it is there. Keep an eye on it. It's That's the trend. People, everybody is like trying to see how can I integrate ChatGPT. Just keep an eye out. And I'm sure we're going to start seeing a lot of a lot of that stuff. I would love to see uh, a, a chatbot where he could say, hey, man, I'm I'm trying to book something for next Thursday for 10 people. What's the go? Like I just talk to, to the website and it will just, try to book you in without you having to go through a whole a steps of click, 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 you know, it's just a lot more personable and it might remember you the next time that you, you, you visit it say, Oh, Hey Mark, how did you go last time? Oh yeah. I enjoyed it. You, would you like to book another session? <laughs> yeah, sure. You know, like that, that would be amazing to start seeing. Absolutely. Well, yeah. you know, what has been amazing having you on the show today, that has been amazing. Now, Mark, thank you. Thank you, I, I can't thank you enough for all the, information that you've given 
us and um, being with us on the show today. And that, ladies and gentlemen, concludes our insightful conversation with Mark Coda on the Online Prosperity Show. And we've gained valuable knowledge about the intricacies of restaurant marketing and the importance of aligning your business and marketing goals. And as you have noticed, Mark's personal journey has brought significant um, you know, insights as to how you can actually do this. I'm, I'll be putting in all his information so that you can connect with Mark. Now, we could go on and on, talk about everything else that's coming up and everything else. We sincerely thank you for sharing your expertise and we wish you all, um, you know, um, the latest success in whatever technology that comes in and you get on top of it. Okay, so stay tuned for more uh, inspiring conversations on the online prosperity issue. This has been Prosper. Thank you so much for joining us today. Bye for now.